Sahara is the world's vastest tropical desert. Everything here seems to combine against life. But below the dust, the sand and the scorched rocks, there is a glitter of hope. Water. The Sahara's wells, oases and lakes are the desert's only sources of life. A few gallons of water can always be drawn from the ground, but the question is, how much longer? Right across the Libyan Sahara, history's biggest water pipeline is being built. Ancient underground water resources are to help break the rain of dust and sand and make the desert green. Can this vision become a reality? Or will it upset the Sahara's water system? People navigating across the Sahara call the great desert Bar Bela Mar, the waterless ocean. This ocean of sand is nature's ultimate challenge, a challenge the caravans face every day as they have done for millennia. They endure daytime temperatures of up to 170 degrees in the sun, for there is no shade. The last time it rained here may have been 10 years ago. The few drops were not really worth remembering. In many places, the waterless ocean tosses up steep waves or surprises the traveler with less visible dangers. Especially those who use more modern means of transportation need to be on the lookout. One can cross the entire Sahara from the Atlantic to the Red Sea, a distance of some 3,000 miles without ever driving on a solid road surface. The Sahara covers three and a half million square miles. The state territory of Libya alone makes up one-fifth of the Sahara. 95% of Libya is desert. The extinguished volcano, Vau Anamus, is a witness of the turbulent past of the world's largest desert. The volcanic cone is at the center of 40,000 square miles of a bone-dry gravel plain. The film crew trails a long cloud of black dust. Whoever makes it to this place feels as though they're on an alien planet. And it's not very long that humans have first walked to this ground. Can you, can you tell me uh, yeah, where we are? It was not until 1931 that the first expedition reached the Vau Anamus. Yet it is not unlikely that a caravan has stumbled across the crater before then, says Khaled the crew's local guide. I think this is very, very beautiful. Like Khaled knows the area like the back of his hand. 
He tells the crew that in the lunar landscape around the crater, lush vegetation can be found. Even animals survive here. The Bedouin has lit a fire, and just in time, night falls suddenly, and then the temperatures drop to almost freezing. This is due to the extremely low humidity. In more temperate regions, the humidity in the atmosphere stores the warmth of the day, smoothing out the difference between day and night. In the desert, however, the warmth is gone as soon as the sun sets. But the clear air opens the view into the skies. The moon seems closer than anywhere else in the world. Stars, you can see a lot, a lot of stars. Daybreak drives the shadows from Vau and Amus. The volcano harbors a secret, a wonderful whim of nature. Water in the middle of the desert, five lakes in a gigantic caldera. The caldera is 400 feet deep and measures two and a half miles across. This natural wonder is the aftermath of a cataclysm. When the volcano was no longer active, it collapsed. For volcanoes, this is not so unusual, but the Vau and Namus collapsed in a special place, cutting into a subterranean water reservoir. Supplied with water, the once fiery crater turned into a blossoming oasis. With sometimes unpleasant side effects. Vawanamus literally means oasis of the mosquitoes. The tracks in the sand are from fennex and jackals. They cannot drink the water in the five lakes. It contains too much salt. But one doesn't have to dig very deep to find drinkable water. A member of the film crew tries the taste. The oasis is just as exposed to the desert heat as the dusty plain surrounding it. Every year, half a billion gallons of water are lost by evaporation. This is why the banks are surrounded by a white crust. Fresh water is not quite the correct term for the lake's content. But these birds can't afford to be choosy when they touch down during their long migration across the Sahara. The film crew climbs a small volcanic cone of more recent origin. Plants have not yet been able to colonize its top. It's a little desert within the oasis. Surrounded by thousands of square miles of bare rock and dust, the five lakes at Vaunamus appear to have dropped out of the ethereal blue. But in fact, it's the opposite. The water comes from below.
Below the Sahara, the alleged waterless ocean, a deep reservoir of the volatile liquid is hidden. It's the Saharan aquifer. Below the state territory of Libya alone, there are four vast reservoirs, each measuring 700 miles across, with a depth of nearly four miles. These immense water resources are the heritage of a time when North Africa was a green garden with lots of rain. With a camera jib, the crew tries to get insights into the secrets of the ancient Sahara. The desert has come through an eventful geological history. Until 10 million years ago, the waterless ocean was submerged under a shallow sea. The traces of this marine past are present everywhere, in sandstone formations and limestone consisting of sea shells. When the animals that inhabited the waters of this ancient sea died, their shells and skeletons sank into the sand on the sea floor.